the Joe Rogan experience. And honestly, particularly in the last 15 years when I started really taking martial arts seriously, half the stuff that I've been able to do right in my creative life are principles that I learned on the mat with my Sifu. Mm. You know, guard your center. Uh, keep your eye on the lead elbow. Um, get to the blind side, you know. How often do you do that? Uh, I started, I think I'm in the 15th or 16th year. Uh, Sifu was over day before yesterday. So, you know, a bunch of times a week. And if I'm working on something or if he can make it to location, we'll have long stretches where we're doing it every day. Then there's gratings. So you got to prep for those, you know. Mm -hmm. It's uh, So what are you doing? Are you doing Kung Fu? Like, is it a very particular, particular uh, style? Tr traditional Wing Chun. Kung really? Fu, yeah. Which is... Um, very underrated art form. Yes. Also... So many trade secrets and so different than how I see it when I'm looking at videos in that in UFC, everything is out in the open and it's discussed. And you see in a lot of the, the Eastern stuff, there was a turf wars and we're not really going to show them mm -hmm. our footwork. We're not going to do this. So, But anyway, it's been a real deep dive with my Sifu, Eric Oram who's Sifu, my Sikgung, is uh, Grandmaster William Chung, renowned kind of Hong Kong rooftop fights, all that stuff. Amazing lore, but very technical, difficult to build, and easy to use. You know, uh, it's, you very rarely see that in the UFC, but one of the best fighters in the UFC uses it regularly, Tony, uh, Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson uses trapping hands. The Mook Jung. Yeah. Yeah. He, he grabs wrists and comes over the top with elbows. He does straight Wing Chun. He does it all the time. And he even practices on a wooden, wooden dummy. Yeah. I got my ass kicked by a wooden dummy for about three years. And then I finally understood the principle of uh, don't fight force with force. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's just nuts. So anyway, half the time, if I would be in a, a critical artistic situation i would just say um because wing chun problems are life problems life problems are wing chun problems and i would just go back to how did this kind of relate to because i don't like getting clocked and getting my teeth knocked in because we tend to sometimes we glove up but we're not wearing mouthpieces it's very uh why do you wear a mouthpiece it's certainly not because he's very good at pulling his punches and he's also even better at making sure that i don't accidentally hit him but we get as close as, as we can to what the, the real uh, experience would be. But again, it's like everything. I'm sure, uh, you know, a few clicks back down the road, there's things that instructors were doing that would be considered illegal to do to a group of students nowadays. Yeah, for sure. So Not just a few clicks while I was coming up. That's, uh, that's yeah. what I would imagine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's – yeah. They'd hit each other. Yes. <laughs> that students would get beat up. Yes. It was a normal thing. <laughs> yes. Um, you, uh, so did you start training for Sherlock Holmes or you started training before that? I didn't. Then? It absolutely coincided with my recovery. Oh. And the two things just somehow or other seemed to, to lock in. When, and uh, I'll talk to you uh, um, off the record and afterwards about any and everything to do with my recovery as far as it locked in with this. It was an apprentice, an apprenticeship, and it was a, an apprenticeship that was contingent on me uh, being in a certain headspace. Mm. You know, well, it's a good thing too because uh, it's an, it's a very addictive thing. People get very addicted to martial arts, and it's a good substitute for yeah. sometimes uh, negative addictions. You know, Bourdain before he died, he was obsessed with Brazilian jiu jitsu. Wow. Yeah, became really obsessed with it at fifty eight. Wow. And, and got really good. He was he was training every day, and he was training twice a day every day. So he went from when I first met him, he was chubby, he was smoking cigarettes, he drank every night, still kind of still drank every night, but you know he just did enough to enough healthy things to keep his body together. And then uh, his ex wife got really into jujitsu, 
And then uh, he decided to follow her one day to classes, and he was kind of mocking it and laughing at it at first, <laughs> and then became obsessed. Wow. And then really got good. I mean, he was in, at the look at it, he won in a tournament. And I mean, oh my gosh! Yeah, he's fucking sixty years old. Jesus there. age. What's really crazy is a picture of him walking down the street in, I think they were in Rome, and he has no shirt on, and he's fucking ripped. Anthony Bourdain, full six-pack. Really? Yeah, dude, he was obsessed. He would take a private every day. Look at him. Look at that photo. That's Dear crazy. Me. He's, a, he's like 60-something years old there. Wow. So he would take a private lesson every day, and then he would take a class. So he would take a private lesson, sharpen up techniques, and then Go he would roll. Yeah. He'd take group classes, too, which is very, very critical. You've got to roll with different people. 100%. Yeah, and so he was in there. Like, and it became a good thing for him to sort of become addicted to this positive thing. Yeah, I mean, for me, it, it wasn't going to be golf. It wasn't <laughs> going to be something passive like that, even right. though I hear it's great. But it's been uh, – it's just been a great gift. And it's also the thing where, you know, you're just – you're never done. I made Black Belt five years ago um, for another grading and now we're doing a lot of weapon stuff and uh, it's just – I, That's I just awesome. Adore Congratulations. It. Yeah. Um, my Taekwondo teacher said something to me when I was very young. He said that it, it is a tool for developing your human potential. Yeah, and I never forgot that because I'm like, yeah, it's because it's really difficult to do. Like all martial arts are really di – it's really difficult to get your body to move that way and to be able to be effective in a conflict situation. And if you can do it and you can do it over and over again and you can overcome that difficult thing and you thought it was insurmountable and then you figured out how to do it, eventually you get to this point where you realize, well, everything in life is like that. Everything in life is like something – it's a puzzle. You have to figure out what, what, how am I approaching it wrong? What, what can I do to make it better? How do I get – more competent at this particular skill or this particular discipline. Yeah. And just the humility too. I mean, if I've noticed anything in the last couple of years, just in, in UFC, which by the way, I was doing a Robert Altman film called the gingerbread man back in the nineties. And I, UFC had just started off and I was getting the VHS tapes yeah. and watching them. And so when they go back on the 25 years ago, I was like, I've been, I've been, I've been there from jump that's awesome but we watch uh it's just that thing of no matter what you think um the uh the tides are changing quickly and yeah and you just got to keep keep working well that was a real wake-up call for a lot of martial artists was the ufc because a lot of the stuff that they were doing really wasn't effective yeah they, they thought it would be if everybody was playing by the rules in the dojo and sort of following along the but once you really saw an actual caged event where people were just going balls out, you realize, oh, a lot of this stuff just doesn't work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love how messy it was at the beginning, too, yeah. because the style matchups were so – they were almost Crazy. laughable until you, until you saw the violence. And no weight classes. <laughs>